Greg, thank you so much for having me to your studio today. We're surrounded by glass. I'm intimidated because I'm a klutz, but I'm going <laughs> to try to keep my hands to myself. And let's dive in. When did you start working with glass? When did you realize that this was a creative outlet you wanted to delve into? About six, seven years ago, Emily and I went to a um, lesson here in town doing some glass and I said, you know, this reminds me of something I used to do when I was in high school because I did did some glass in high school. But at that point, I didn't think of it as a creative outlet, just didn't know what to do with it. Mm -hmm. So when I started doing it here, I said, you know, I, this is really fun. I really liked it. So I got hooked real quickly. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned Emily, your wife, yes. who's lovely. And actually, you are both now glass artists, but you work in very different ways. So tell me what your process is. You work with a torch? Yes, I work with a torch fueled by propane and oxygen. Um, so it's quite hot. I mostly make beads, which are made on a mandrel. Um, and I get the glass hot and kind of wrap it around the mandrel, then heat it up, get it round, and then decorate the bead with other pieces of glass or sometimes with some silver or copper. Let me rewind back to that, that class that you and Emily took. Yes. Um, did you know right away that you were going to dive right in, that this was something that you needed to, to really get yourself into? Yes. Yes, I really did. Um, then we took another class sometime after that up in Kalamazoo and actually making beads uh, actually with a different type of glass. Um, the art glass comes in many different um, with different characteristics. Uh, so what the first class uh, actually with somebody who's been on your program before, Ron Park. Oh, uh -huh. um, and the class up in Kalamazoo with, with a different glass a lot of the bead artists and sculptural artists use. Um, uh, mine comes from Murano. Most of my glass comes from Murano. Now you mentioned Iran, um, who is a glass blower. Yes. Tell me some of the differences between all of these. Emily and I were talking about the, the differences between the, the way that you work with glass. And my mind was blown because I, I, I had no idea, even though we have uh, interviewed him before. So yes, clarify yes. for me, if you will. <laughs> there are three main categories of people that work with glass. Um, there's cold glass working, uh, warm glass and hot glass. Cold glass is like stained glass, mm -hmm. where you cut the glass cold and then you solder strips around it to hold it in place. Warm glass is often thought of as being kiln worked glass, mm -hmm. where it is, she cuts up sheets of glass and puts them back together again, kind of like doing quilting with a lot more right. <laughs> to it than that. And then it's put in the kiln and fused back together into one single piece of glass. Mm -hmm. Now, did you find that it was a steep learning curve? Even as you are explaining all of the different types of glass and, and the way in which you can work with it, my mind is blown. Did you catch on really quickly or did it take <laughs> a minute to sort of figure out what this whole new world was? Um, it's a whole long process. Um, I could melt the glass and put it on the mandrel pretty quickly and without too much trouble and get it decently round. <laughs> um, just, you know, with several hours on it. Um, but I am still trying to learn to do some things that I tried to do back then that I, it's, it just doesn't work for me. Mm. And I think that's, that's true of many people that everybody has a different skill. Um, I do things with very, very small strings of glass, like threads of glass. Mm -hmm. And like for Ron Park, he says, no, I can't, no. <laughs> I'm <laughs> and, not doing and, that. And, you know, that's, that's fine. That's, that's not in his area of work that he does. Yeah. Um, but then I, things that I would like to do, I see other people do and it's, ah, yeah. how, how'd she do that? Yeah. Um, I just I started trying to make flowers and I made some little ugly flowers that kind of look nice sometimes <laughs> if the light's right. Um, <laughs> if you squint. But then there are, there's somebody just made 
a carnation has carnation with like 50 different petals on it. I wow. go, what? Yeah. So tell me a little bit more about the logistics of what you do. I'm looking at these tiny pieces of glass. <laughs> it freaks me out. Um, <laughs> um, tell me a kind of like start to finish. If you were making um, a bead, for example, okay. um, kind of uh, how does that work? Well, I, I take it, I'll grab a larger mandrel right here. Here's okay. a stainless steel mandrel. It's actually part of a welding rod. Okay. And I heat that in the torch and take a piece of glass, get that, get this hot so it's glowing and it's hot on the end. Uh -huh. Touch it and just turn it around and turn both things at the same time so I get glass there and then it that winds around winds it. Winds around uh -huh. it and then um, just heat it there in the flame. And then if I want to decorate a piece of glass, let's see if I can find a smaller piece. See, so here's, here's a smaller piece of glass that I can put dots on it or draw lines on it. Mm -hmm. Different sizes here, different colors. Um, also different chemistries. Uh, this, I have a lot of glasses that interact chemically with each other and get little lines between them. And then I have glasses that will change color in the flame or bring silver out to the surface. So you get a shiny surface. I can get silver surfaces or gold surfaces. And I've been wanting to start doing some fuming. So I take some gold, uh, gold or silver. I don't I have a piece right there. I had a piece of silver there. Um, and put that in the flame so it vaporizes and deposits on the glass and you can get colors out of that. Uh, some of the red and pink glass uh, actually has gold in the glass. So it's, it's a very interesting process. There's a lot to learn, not only about physically doing the work, mm -hmm. but also about what's going to happen to the glass when you heat it. That's what I'm learning. I, and I'm, I, I just keep thinking to myself, so how much of that is trial and error? And how much do you learn from watching? And I, I have to, I'm a hands-on learner. <laughs> so it would take me a lot of, um, ugly pieces, I feel, to to get a, a handle on how especially the, the glass reacts um, to the flame and yes. just the chemistry yes. of it. No matter how much you read, how much you think you know, when you sit down at the torch, it's going to be different. Mm. And it's going to be different on different days, it seems. Huh. And it's, it's very interesting. You have to keep adapting. And when I buy rods of glass, they're made in batches at the factory and no two batches are the same. Mm. Um, I, I, I have bins of glass over there and I can have glass with the same number, same name. They look different on in the bin, so they look different and they come out the same. And I have some that look the same, they come out different. <laughs> And when you start mixing the chemistry in with that, it really changes. Yeah. Is that frustrating or is it exciting? <laughs> to me, it would be frustrating, but I have this sneaking suspicion that, that it might be kind of fun for you. Well, one of the things you have to do as a glass artist, and I'm sure any type of artist, is learn to adapt to the medium you have. Mm. Uh, it's, it's always adapting to what you have. Tell me about your design process. You were telling me that you know you you will take a rod of glass, you know, make it round, and then you can take a smaller one and maybe do the dots. Right. How much of of that design is predetermined? Do you have in your head exactly how you want it to come out, and how much of it is um, the circumstances <laughs> and and the chemistry of it all, and um, and happy accidents? Uh, it's it's a combination of things. Uh, the, like I said before, you have to adapt to everything that's going to happen. I have, I have two different white, white glasses that I use. One of them is kind of leaks color through it. You can kind of see the color through it if it's real thin. Mm -hmm. uh, the other one's quite denser in color and then sometimes, and they both flow differently. So if I put dots on, one of them will just spread out like that and some of them the other will be maybe needs a little assistance because i don't want to get it too hot because that might change the base glass 
Yeah. And believe it or not, you can boil glass. Um, so if you get it too hot, sometimes the metals that are in the glass will vaporize and then it starts to boil and then you've got a bad, a bad surface and bad color. And it's, it's all adapting to everything. And it, yeah, it can be frustrating. What has working with glass and, and making this beautiful art taught you about yourself? It is letting me express myself artistically more. I'm, I'm not, I'm not a great artist. It's I'm, I'm more of a technician. Hmm. Honestly, I have an engineering background, so I'm very technically <laughs> oriented. Um, but it allows me to express myself, and it gives me a a wonderful means of interacting with people. Hmm. I love talking about it. And the things, when I, when we're at a show and somebody comes up and just absolutely loves some of the glass that I've done, um, even if they don't buy it, it feels good. Yeah. That they think it's pretty. And that I have made something that somebody else has enjoyed. Yes. That's really what I enjoy. All this, yes, but interacting with the customer and seeing their happiness in something that I've made. That's where the real, that's where it really is. Wow, Greg, like I said, your perspective is fantastic. Your work is fantastic. I have to disagree with you. I think you are quite an artist. <laughs> um, I thank you so much for taking the time to sit down with me today. It's been a real joy. Thank you very much.